Hey kids, welcome to lesson two, Java Lab part one. One of the hardest parts about Java is it's very similar to JavaScript, yet it's also very different. And most of you, I assume, are coming in here with a JavaScript background. The one nice thing about code.org is it really breaks down the differences between Java and JavaScript that you learned last year in APCSP right off the bat. And these first couple of lessons really build a foundation of what you're gonna learn this year in APCSA and ultimately be tested on, and that's the Java language. No matter what language you're out there trying to learn, what you're doing is learning how to access pre-written instructions to do specific items. That's what programming is. Whether you're doing Scratch all the way up to C++, it's all about how do we follow these pre-written steps to access the memory to actually complete a program. Now, the big thing about Java, and you're going to hear this a lot, is it's an object-oriented programming language. Well, what's that mean? The easiest way, and you're going to hear this over and over again, is it's very similar to blueprints and building things. If you want to build a house, you would go out and talk to a home builder. There's a bunch of different options for a home they can build for you. In Java, this home you want to build is a class. A class is the blueprints for a house. It defines the properties of that house. Hopefully, all houses have the same things in common. They have roofs, windows, walls, and doors. You could build a really fancy house with a ton of windows and glass and a giant pool. Or you could build a more normal house that you see every day that doesn't look like you just won the lotto. Or you could build a super scary shack in the woods. Whatever the house, the one you choose becomes an object, your house. It's the end product built by the properties defined in the class. This idea of objects is one of the foundational concepts in this language, object-oriented programming. There are others, polymorphism, inheritance, encapsulation, but this is the one we're learning about today. The other thing about Java is you need a compiler. And what you see in front of you is code.org's version of it. That's an IDE. There's a lot of popular ones out there. I'll just tell you right now, none of them integrate into the curriculum currently. You can't use Replit, go out there and import uh, this code.org painter. It doesn't work. This is all an internal thing with no external access. As of right now in recording this, I don't know of any GitHubs or libraries out there where you can import it. So unfortunately, you are going to have to deal with their IDE. And that's really a great starting point for this lesson. Let's take a look at this IDE. It is similar to what you saw in APCSP, but there are some differences. We have our coding environment here. And you can see it is all text-based. I can't make any blocks. There are no block options here. So you're going to have to write everything out. And there is no pre-written blocks we could drag out here either. There are ones we can type in. That's what this import is up here. But ultimately, nothing we can just drag and drop like that before. You're going to see over here. In this left-hand corner, we're always going to have the same thing, our instructions or what to do. Up in the corner here, you'll see instructions, and that'll go down what has to be done during this lesson. You'll have documentation, and this will actually talk about everything that's happening here. So today, we're going to talk a little bit about this main method, this public static void, all of this. And you can always go to documentation and for any of the lessons at any time, it'll tell you a little more about what's happening behind there. And also new on this, if your teacher sets it up, there's a review section. It just helps reinforce what we learned in this lesson. 
down here we have whatever is getting displayed or done so whatever we do up here is going to be seen either here or our old friend the console.log is down here it's not called console.log anymore it's going to be called a print statement but it's still a console we can still clear our comments whenever we need to run our program we hit it down here testing is about our import right there whether or not we're pulling in everything we need to and over here we can switch to light mode or dark mode i will be doing these videos in dark mode ultimately when you're done with the lesson you're going to hit finish that's how you get credit up here similar to before we have our version history we can also commit the code or save it that will go to our backpack that we'll be able to use in the future and then over here we can create new files Ooh, it says dot java i wonder if that's important and then we have our file here and it looks like it's called my neighborhood with a little drop down that just gives me option to rename it and delete it these are all of the parts here we're going to interact with we're not going to get too deep into the code right now just to define some things because you're going to see them over and over again over here this is an import statement this is just bringing a library into use much like a library you might have created for your create task this is going to be bringing in something called the neighborhood painter and i assume that's an object we're going to use here this right here is my class header this over here is my method header don't worry too much about this we're going to get to when you use static and void and all that in the future this is pretty much in every bit of your code down here is the actual method this painter we're going to learn down the road is a link to this object we're importing here looks like i'm creating some new version of that and then it looks like it's doing something that's the anatomy of the code and again we're going to talk about these method headers class headers all of that stuff as we go along but let's discover this together. Like I said earlier, code.org really does a great job of introducing all of these concepts gradually in a very easy way to consume as we go along. Let's go ahead and look and read what they want us to do for this lesson. Investigate and modify. Run the program by clicking the orange run button at the bottom. Observe what the program does, then make the following changes to the program. Run the program after each change to observe the results. All right, that doesn't sound too hard. Let's go ahead and hit run and let's see what happens here. It says, ooh, you got an error. There is no .java files, everything is empty. So it's much like the test here. It's just saying there's nothing here. That's a problem. Problem definitely is it's not reading the file we need to run. There's some disconnect there. If we go up here, I can see this class header is called my neighborhood. This is in Pascal case. That means every first word is uppercase. Camel case, you don't uppercase the first word. It's my neighborhood. But if we look at my file up here, it says my neighborhood. And I bet you part two is going to deal with that. Change the name of the file by clicking the arrow on the tab and rename it. Enter my neighborhood for the file name and then run that program again. Does this fix the error? So I'm going to go over here, hit rename. And again, it's just going to be a capital M, capital N. And we're going to rename it just like this class header right here. Hmm. That must mean the file probably linked to this class header in some way let's run it and see if this fixes the problem hmm it does not it's still saying you don't have any dot java files and if we look at number three it says hey let's do this one more time let's enter my neighborhood dot java this time run the program again 
see if it fixes it. Now my file, same as my class header, .java, let's run and see if that fixes it. Well, something happened there. It looked like my painter came over, ate that paint bucket, and then turned a bunch of times. And if we look up here, well, that's what happened. My painter must be this object. Hmm, it's pretty interesting. So it looks like I'm creating some object here and then doing something with it. That sounds like a good example of what object-oriented programming is. We're not done yet though. We want to add one more line of code and that code is going to be my painter.move. If we look over here, applying the same thoughts I just had, this my painter is this little Waluigi looking person down here. Then if I add move, they should move to the next little dot here. So these are a lot like our move commands we had in JavaScript. Like I said, you're going to see a lot of similarities, but again, the programming languages are extremely different. It's one of the frustrating things about doing these two classes is the similarities are so close yet they're so, so different. Let's go down here and add this extra line here, my painter, and it has to be exactly like above. And let's do the move here. We'll have to put a semicolon after every line. Don't forget that. A lot will drive you crazy. Let's hit run and see what happens. Everything worked pretty good. Now I want to show you one thing real quick because you're going to have a lot of errors in this. Let's say if we misspell move, we say mover and run. I just want to show you the debugging down here and it's really helpful towards you. So if something doesn't work, make sure you bring up your console and maximize it and read why. So if we look here, it tells me line 16, that's line 16 where I made the spelling error, there's something wrong there. And it even points and tells me, hey, it's right there. And we have a little carrot there saying even more helpful of a hint. It's somewhere over here. This is the actual diagnosis of what's happening and the issue. Hey, we couldn't find mover in the thing that you imported there. Just helpful moving forward, just wanted to show it to you. Well, kids, well, that's it. That is our first little lesson. And honestly, as we move forward, it isn't much more difficult than this. And I promise you, if you stick with it by the end, this will make a lot more sense. Big takeaways from this lesson? Well, the big takeaway is Java is this object-oriented program. We have to create objects, and that's what we do things with. In this example, my painter is that object we're creating. It's a blueprint from the actual painter. Again, think of the house builder. They can build houses, but they need a blueprint to do it. We can change it. We also learned something called a class header. And we learned that that has to have the same name as the file name, and we need that .java file name in there for it to run. Finally, when we wanted to do something, we had to call that object. In our case, my painter is that object, and we're telling it to do something. And again, in that documentation, as we go along, we're gonna learn more and more about the syntax and how we can use it in different ways. If you really want to jump to the end of the book, if you click on this little part here, this will take you to the actual documentation here. And then when you click on the org.code.neighborhood in Painter, 
This will actually take you to the documentation. All of the things you can do, there's our move one there. But again, this will probably be a little confusing to you right now. But if you're one of those people that have to know why things work the way they do, this is it. So this is the library we are importing right here. Again, there's a lesson coming up. We're going to take a look at it. So not going to spoil too much here. Well, that's it, kids. That's lesson one. Hopefully Java is a little less intimidating to you. As always, if you have any questions, please come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. See you later, kids. Bye, bye, bye.